All right, here we are back in Iowa again. Um, got home from Virginia, all right. And the uh, um, first thing I did when I got back from Virginia is I kind of needed my truck and I I didn't have my Roller 302 done for it, which it seems like I'm never going to have it done. I always got stuff coming up. Um, this is my senior year of college, so hopefully uh, <laughs> when it gets done, I got a little more time in the evenings. But anyway, I pulled my 289 out of the old Galaxy and dropped it in the old truck here. So it's doing pretty good. It's got a little bit more cam than necessary for a truck. So, uh, um, you know, it got me to thinking, you know, it runs just fine, but it could be better with a smaller cam. And uh, it got me to thinking about camshafts. And I've been hearing a lot of people... Uh, um, you know, they'll run around and say, oh yeah, I got 12 to 1 compression and stuff. It's a 12 to 1 383. You know, they'll, they'll say a bunch of stuff like that. And they're talking, uh, you know, 12 to 1, depending on what camshaft you're running, is a huge difference in your actual compression. Now, when people are referring to 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1, and they're always asking on the forums, hey, you know, can I run this on pump gas? You really got to know the camshaft specs. So... Um, you know, those valves um, are open by the cam, and actually you're not getting full um, static compression. If you were doing that, your, cam your cam loads would be able to open on a dime, and it, it takes time. It has to, the lifter has to ride up on that cam lobe, so that means your valves are going to be open while your piston's moving. So because of that, we have what's called dynamic compression. That is your true, useful compression. Now... Most street engines, um, the highest you ever want to shoot for with dynamic compression is uh, eight and a half to one. And I like to stay around eight to one because I only have 91 octane. And this particular engine is 7.9 or something like that, if I remember right from building it. It's been a while, but it does good. I still got to run it on 91, I'm sure, because of the iron heads. But, um, you know, I really want to make mention of that. There's a big difference between your uh, static compression, your dynamic compression, and below um, in my description here, I'm gonna leave a link to a really good page about dynamic compression that anyone who plays with engines or thinks they're gonna swap camshafts really needs to read. So, um, and you know, the bigger lift cam you start going with, you're gonna need more static compression because that camshaft is gonna have more and more of that overlap. So you know, with that overlap, you're bleeding off that static compression. And that's kind of that rumpity rump sound you get from the camshaft. But if you don't boost that static compression so that you keep your dynamic compression at around that eight to one mark, you're just going to have an engine that sounds really good, but just blows a lot of gas, is really inefficient, and has very little power. So, um, I just really think that uh, people should keep that in mind when they're building engines. It's been a big difference in, uh, you know, why my engines are, are powerful like they are in such a small package, because they're making use of all the uh, dy dynamic compression that they can. And, uh, you know, again, the more camshaft you're running, um, you're going to have to get those tolerances closer and closer to get as much static compression as you can. And, uh, you know, it really gets dangerous. So, you know, if you run a vehicle around on the street like I do, you know, um, you really, you really want to keep your camshaft toned down. You really don't need cam. You can really make a lot of power with engine heads and everything of that nature and carburetor setting, timing intake there's a lot of power to be had there so um again you know it's something to be mindful of but uh i know this wasn't a super exciting video but um anyone who goes around builds engines should know so like i said i'm posting that link in the description below and i encourage everyone to go ahead and read that it's a the most comprehensive um, bit I've ever read on it and then you can actually download a calculator to calculate your dynamic compression with your engine components so um, It's really nice and definitely something you should keep in mind when you're uh, Building engines. So anyway, there you have it all the way up from Iowa